So over the past five years, I've been able to get more than 400 clients with different offers that I've set in place for my own marketing agency and also my coaching business. And if you are someone that's looking to get a great offer in place where you walk to your clients and they look at it and they're like, whoa, this is the best offer that I've seen in the game. Here's my money. Here's my credit card. Then you're at the right place at the right time looking at this video because I got something special for you today. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a strategy in terms of setting up your offer, getting the golden offer, what an offer in general is, but also diving into the different kinds of offers that you can use because I see so many people struggle with what kind of offer they need to do for their niche. And even without even having a niche, they're still, you know, doubting themselves. You know, I don't have a niche or I have a niche, but I don't know how to position my offer to my audience. And I can tell you that you can choose a niche. You can have the best niche that there is if you think there is, but if your offer is not good, you're not going to get the results. So you need to have a great offer. Just like Alex Ramosi said in his hundred million dollar offers book, the most important thing about having an offer is making it as attractive as you can towards your ideal clients. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up an offer that is irresistible for your clients that they basically cannot say no to. And that all we're going to be doing in this 55 minute video. So grab a pen, grab a paper and make sure that you're noting down all of these things and watch through this video because this is one of the videos from my business blueprint program that is exactly going to be sharing with you how to do this. And you know, the problem program being a program that I've created over the past three years, set myself down, focused in, created one of the best things that I could potentially create because I've been using the same strategy that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video regarding the offer. So like I said, grab pen, grab paper, let's get into the offer and the best SMMA offers. And in general, also, if you want to do this for coaching offers, best offers that you can use to get 400 plus clients this year. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, Stefan here. Welcome to a brand new module of the HC Blueprint. And today we're going to be talking about a special, special module, which is going to be the golden offer. Now, this module is incredible and, and I've enjoyed doing it a lot basically in creating this module for you because especially like one thing when it comes down to like, you know, choosing your offer and what you're going to do and all those things, it can become like a blurry type of thing. And after this module, you're going to have more clarity on what your offer is going to be or if you already have an offer how you can use guarantees, right? Or implications to actually start getting even better results and, and improve your offer. So more people are going to be saying yes to your offers. So let's dive into this module, the golden offer and explain to you what an offer is. Number one, managing offerings versus results oriented offerings, which model you can use because we, we have a lot of models <laughs> that you can use. We have packages versus single offerings and the customer is king. So what is an offer with Don Corleone sitting in the background? What it is. So an offer concerns the service we are going to provide for the customer to give them results. That's it. That's what an offer is. All right. So we, we are going to give a service because we have a service based business with a marketing agency and we're going to be providing, you know, the customer with results through that service. That's our offer, right? And the offer, what it, what makes an offer really good? What makes it stand out? So many agency owners get distracted by a new offer that has come onto the market. They think it's all about paper lead. Then they think it's all about the performance model. Then I think it's all about something else, right? Something that flies by or that it's about AI or, uh, you know, just AI automation, right? When it's not about that. So, what they don't understand is that a simple and existing offer can already be the answer, right? Because your clients don't care about your offer. They care about that it can actually fix their solution, that it actually can fix their problems, needs, and desires. That's the only thing they care about, right? So this is what it's all about. It's about your niche, you understanding your niche, right? That's the input you give. You give the niche the input. That's basically what you choose. Then we have the niche combining with the offering right? How big are the problems, needs, and desires of your niche? And how well does your offer solve it? And then we'll see the result, right? So AKA on a scale of one to 10, what are the problems, needs, and desires of your niche? If it's a 10 and your offer solves it at 10 out of 10, the result is going to be a 10 out of 10, right? If it's not happening, then there's some feedback that you're going to get depending on the results that you're going to get, right? When you approach them or when you start getting them results that you can take with you and adjust regarding the niche and regarding your offer. And this is what we'll be working with, right? I already talked to you about the inputs, the process, the outputs, and the feedback that we get. And this goes for everything, everything that we talk about, okay? So the most important thing to remember is that if you don't get any results, it is 95% due to the offer and not the niche you have chosen. 
in the niche module, we've talked about saturated niches, unsaturated niches, and practically the niches cannot really be saturated, but that the offer usually is saturated. So the offer is saturated by a niche like realtors and a lot of people just pitching the same offer, 1K per month, 2K per month for the same thing. So 2K per month for 100 leads, for example. So if you come with the same offer to the, those people, they're going to say, you're providing the same thing. Why should I choose for you? Right? So you need to understand that your offer needs to be diversified with either a different guarantee, and depending on the market sophistication, which is something we'll talk later down the line, you need to understand how you can apply an offer that is actually attractive for them. So they're going to say yes to something that they've probably never heard before. And the more important, the, the more differentiated your offer is, the more important it's going to be for a saturated niche. For an unsaturated niche, your offer can still be, you know, pretty much like simple. It can be like a monthly retainer or some offers that we're going to get into just now. It doesn't have to be that really complicated, but especially in, in, in saturated niches in the market where a lot of people are doing things, you need to have a good offer. So there's, like I said, three things when it comes down to sales, what's really important. One, it's you, you the salesperson. How confident are you in your tonality? How confident are you in the way that you're talking? Second thing is your offer. How good is your offer, right? And that's something that we're gonna be using right now. And then the third one is your company. How good are your reviews, your referrals, your clients, all these things that you can actually show to people. In a saturated niche, you're gonna need all those three things to be 10 out of 10. And if you go into an unsaturated niche, you're gonna have these things not to be a 10 out of 10, so you can kind of get away with a couple of different things, right? But the most important thing is that you adjust and improve the offer to attract customers. So you have to keep testing the offer. It's really, really important. It's never ended. So you can always adjust the offer and implement it. With a niche, we're gonna choose one niche and stick with it, but with the offer, we're gonna be adjusting it. How can we make it better? How can we make it better? How can we change it? How can we improve it, right? Think of yourself as a laboratory technician who has to do various experiments to see what gives the best results. That's basically how you got to see yourself. And the product market fit is crucial here. It's necessary. So offer your customers what they need and give them and what gives them the highest return. That's the most important thing, right? It's not about how sexy your offer is. It's about how well it helps your clients. That's what it's all about. Okay. So my experience is that when I started with content creation like five years ago, six years ago, and social media management for my clients in 2018, and time went on, as time went on, I realized that I could generate faster and better results for my clients with a different offering. And I understood that they basically didn't really need the thing that I was giving them. They really didn't really want that. I wasn't solving a big problem, need, or desire for them. I was just doing it because they thought it, it was needed, and I pitched it to them like it was an amazing thing, an amazing new thing right? Which is my, one of my strengths. I can really convince people into doing something which could be really good for them, right? Whilst it might get them results, it might not be the best thing that they could do. So the customer's needs or wish uh, could be achieved more quickly. That's what I did. I, I changed the offering so I could give them even better results with something that could, you know, skyrocket their business and give me more return uh, after that, right? Now the customer is king. So as we will discuss later, the customer is always king. And our offering must be a good fit to solve their problems and fulfill their wishes or needs. That's the only thing. This that's the only thing why we have an offer, is because we want to give clients something to help them as a solution, right? So it's not about what we want. It's about what we can give the customer to get them the best and fastest results. Really understand this. It's not about what you want. It's about what we need to give to the client so they can get the best and fastest results. That makes an offer good. An offer is not good based on if you think it's good. An offer is good based on if it actually solves a solu it solves something for your clients. That's when an offer is good. So for example, if I need to drink, if I have the, if I have thirst, I'm thirsty, I wanna drink something. And someone comes to me and he says, oh, are you thirsty? I'm, I would say yes. On a scale of one to 10, how thirsty are you? I would say 10. They would say, okay, well, I got this, you know, glass, I got water in it, it can, you know, calm your thirst. Would you like something like this? I would say, hell yeah, I would. How much does it cost? He would say, $50. I would say, dude, I don't care, man, I'm thirsty, give me that water, right? And then I'm gonna drink it, that's for right now. There's your $50, sir. So, you understand what I'm trying to say, right? Like, it's always about what someone wants, and we give that to them. That's it. That's what it's all about. It's not about, oh, I think someone needs a glass with water. No, 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 no. 
I go to the market, I ask the market, do you want this? They say yes, I say, okay, then I'll give you this. But if I go to the market and they say, no, I don't want that, I want uh, to have a phone, I give them a phone, right? If they want something else, if they want a book, I give them a book. It depends on what your market needs, Then that, that is what you give them. And of course, then we need to see what is the quickest way to do that, right? So you need to understand that, that is really important. Now, there are two types of offers. I say two types of offers here, basically two, but there are multiple ones. So we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna share two with you, just so you have an idea, and then we're gonna choose models that to go with that. So to keep it simple, let's distinguish these two, let's grab them, it's the managing offering versus the results-oriented offering. So the difference with these two is that, you know, we distinguish between activities when we continuously need to manage things for clients, like really be in their business, working in th on things, right? Instead of being on their business and, making decisions strategically and doing a lot of different things that yield them the highest return. So we can either focus on managing things or delivering results, like tangible results. So the managing offer is on the left-hand side and the characteristics is that the, this offering is primarily focused on the daily management of activities. It is not directly focused on providing more results to the client, but rather saving their time. There's no clear ROI. There's usually social ROI only, that's it. But that's not what we want. I mean, you could, you could give it to clients, right? But it's not as efficient as it would be with a results-oriented offering. So an example of this would be website management, website creation, content creation, social media management, CRM management. I mean, if you were to do CRM management, how would you be able to be paid on results? You wouldn't. So there's no way that you can do it. Or flyers, or billboard advertisements, or TV advertisements. How can I track how much my TV advertisement has done for a client? no idea. I cannot track it. It's managing. We need to manage these things. And the thing is, they don't yield us a clear cut to the chase ROI. And that's why we don't want to use these things, right? So, I mean, just so you understand, I have a lot of connections, a lot of people that have website agencies and they crush it. They have streamlined their website agency and they do great work, right? So managing offerings are pretty good. They're not bad, right? But the only thing is, is that at a certain moment, you know, once you build one website or you do social media management, the client will come to you and they will say, hey, Stefan, why, like, what is actually the result that we're getting? And I could say, you know, you have a great website, better branding, you know, that's one thing. Or I could say you have social media posts, more people can find you, you have more followers now. And he could say, okay, but what did that actually bring me? And I could say, I don't, I don't know, man, social ROI, that's it. Right? So you, hopefully you understand like there's a difference between this and then there's a difference between results oriented offering, which is this offering is usually focused on activities that can achieve the highest return on investment for the client, regardless of the time that it takes. It is not, doesn't matter how much time I put into the website or how much hours I do for the content or it doesn't, they don't care, right? It's a clear ROI. So online advertising for more leads, for more conversions, for more sales or building funnels or lead follow for clients is more results oriented. To give you an example. I run ads for my clients. He asks, okay, Stefan, so we've been doing this for two months. How many people have we actually generated? I can tell him 150 people. And he could say, oh, okay, Stefan, so how much did it actually convert? I could say, okay, this is many appointments. It's clear. I can see it. I can actually see the numbers, right? I can not only see the numbers, but I can see how many clients and leads came through. So it's tangible. It's more tangible. It's more ROI driven, right? So for me, it makes more sense to go onto the right-hand side because I have a focused and efficient agency and you should have one as well, right? Which is why, why you're here. And you got to understand that when you have an agency like this, that it's crucial that we are able to showcase our clients the results that we have been able to achieve. Because then there's no debate as to why they should work with you or not. It's, I wouldn't want to work with you. Why not? Because I've gotten you a 15 times return on your ad spend. Why should you not work with me? I don't get it. So you have leverage, you have power. And you don't bring a social ROI, you bring a direct ROI. So you understand basically that you can bring them something immediately tangible at the front of their, like basically their palm, palm of their hands. You can say, here, this is what I brought to you. This is what I've achieved for you. Let's work together, right? So it's more result driven. That's what it comes down to. Like I said, no right or wrong, it's just perspective. I did both, and I'm currently doing the right right one, but I used to do the left one, and it's not bad, it's good. The only thing is, 
it's a little bit more tougher to scale because with, on the right hand side, I, we can run ads and we can do that in 30 minutes a day. And on the left hand side, we need to, we were creating pictures, doing social media posts, all those things. It took a lot more time and effort to get it done, if that makes sense. So the doctor metaphor comes down to well, something I want to share with you to give you a little bit more insight into these two differences. So let's say, for example, you come to the doctor, you have knee pain and the doctor, you know, you come to the doctor and the doctor says, Okay, so tell me a little bit more about your knee pain. You say, you know, I have knee pain, I have this and this and that. And the doctor says, okay, okay, I understand. So I can fix your knee pain. How bad is your knee pain on a scale of one to ten? You say, it's excruciating, man, excruciating pain. I cannot walk, I cannot do anything. On a scale of one to ten, it's a ten, doctor. It's really bad. And the doctor says, okay, okay. Mm, so what if I told you I could fix this for you in five minutes? It will cost you $5,000. You look at him, you say, $5,000 for just 15 minutes of work? He says, yep, yep. And you say, why? And he says, well, why not? And you say, well, why will it only take you 15 minutes to do so? And the doctor says, well, I could also do it in 15 hours. Price is still the same, but I will fix your knee. Do you understand what I mean with that metaphor? So what I mean with that metaphor is, it doesn't matter how long someone takes to fix something, how long you take to fix something for someone, for your clients. It's all about the value that you can provide. And the bigger the problem is, the bigger the, bigger the need is, the bigger the desire is, the, bigger you, the more you're gonna get paid for the solution. Let me give you another example. Let's say, for example, someone has cancer, God forbid. Someone has cancer. They come to you. You say, what's your problem? They say, I have cancer. On a scale of 1 to 10, how big is your problem? A 10. Let's say I have something that, you, that can fix your cancer, a pill that can take your, cure your cancer. How much would you pay for it? Priceless. There's no amount of money that someone could pay for something like that. Hundreds of thousands, millions, billions, right? So you got to understand that you are the doctor. You are the person at a higher authority level, looking at what value can I bring? You have a value-based price offering. You have a value-based agency. You're based on you're basing your pricing on value. How big is the problem? How much would you be willing to pay? That's what you pay. Doesn't matter if I fix it for you in one minute or 10 minutes. It's also the main reason why we chose to work with as a, a results-oriented agency, not as a managing agency. Now, I'm not trying to put you off and say you don't need to do managing agency and all those things. Like I said, there's a lot of people to be helped also that way. And there's a lot of down sales or upsells that you can use as using that. So, for example, you, you, know, you start with ads, but you sell someone on a website. Or you do a website and you sell someone on ads. So, they go hand in hand. There's no right or wrong. They go both hand in hand. The only thing I'm trying to, to tell you is that you, will, you can get a higher return on when you focus on ROI and on results-oriented, you know, offerings. Just so you understand that, right? So multiple options. Although a results-oriented offering is preferable for us as agency owners, I would still advise you to consider taking on clients for managing offerings initially if they approach you. So this can potentially provide additional cash flow and valuable experience for the future. Not only that, like I said, you can choose to build websites and then downsell them to ads as a monthly recurring because a website is not really monthly recurring. I mean, you can do hosting and all those things, but it's not really monthly recurring, right? So you can do that and then do ads or then do SEO or then do something else that can give you a monthly recurring revenue. So one niche, one offering. That's usually what we start with. The easiest way to scale an agency is by having one niche and one offering. A results-oriented offering is our preference for efficiency, but as mentioned, you may consider having an additional offering in the beginning to generate cash flow. And not only in the beginning, also like, you know, moving forward, you can build websites for them. You can build you know, even like specific landing pages for them. You can do different things. It doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong. There's nothing that's black and white when it comes down to an agency and running an agency or running a business. Now, learn over time. So the best way to create a golden offering is by understanding your niche better. Work on your knowledge of the niche and what they truly need because, you know, where are their clients active? What works well for other marketing agencies in the niche? What would you engage in the offering if you, you were in their shoes? Dare to evolve when it comes to your offering. So to give you an example, you know, my journey regarding this is I started, of course, as a, you know, starter, novice, beginner, 
doing, you know, novice was mostly, you know, social media management and content creation. Then I went into lead generation via Facebook. Intermediate was also lead generation. Advanced was also lead generation. And I did lead follow-ups. And now with coaches and a little bit of e-commerce, we do building funnels, lead generation, and team building and consulting as well added to the offer, right? That's what we do. So that's something that we moved and evolved to and now consistently use for ourselves. So you got to evolve as well. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So my advice to you would be choose an offer and then proceed. You can combine these two as well, right? You can combine them. You can say, we can help you also build your website, but then we will run your ads or we can help you build your website. We'll then do your SEO. You could say we do social media management and then we run your ads. You can combine things. So become creative. Don't think in a box, think out of the box, but don't think too much. Choose one that you know that your niche needs because of the niche research that you did. Base it on that, put your offer in place and get started. Now, let's talk about the models that you can use. So there are multiple, multiple models that you can start using, right, with your agency. Now, to give you an idea of the models that you can use, the first model is the retainer model, right? So the retainer model comes down to a fixed amount per month that the client pays. Usually works well in unsaturated niches because they don't really get approached that much by people. They don't really know what is, you know, an offer that's regular or something like that. So you can go there, pitch an offer. They'll usually say yes to it. And without any guarantee, without anything specific, you can, you know, uh, base it on an amount worked on uh, basically a managing offer, right? So if you say like, oh, I've worked... 50 hours for you and I get a $50 an hour fee, then you get $2,500 for that month, right? I wouldn't really recommend that, but that's an option that you could, that's a route that some people take. I, I don't advise it, but it's a route that some people take. You can also base, you know, the amount on the client's lifetime value with results oriented offering. So we, for example, we calculate the lifetime value, which we're going to do, help you do in week four. We calculate the value of a client, the lifetime value of a client. What does it bring them as a result? And then we base our pricing based on what we deliver them as the lifetime value. Best way to do it, in my opinion. Now, sales skills and expectation must be well established from the beginning. It's really important that you do this and that you explain it well to them because the offers are going to look like this. You can say, hey, we're going to do a one-time fee for website creation. It's $25 an hour, right? It's not really like not really a retainer model, but after the re after that, you can say like, okay, twenty five per hour, but you can say, hey, we're gonna do some hosting also, and that's gonna be four hundred per month to maintain and optimize your website, right? The another one that you could do is fifteen hundred dollars for Facebook ads with a lifetime value of five thousand. So you calculate the f lifetime value of one client. Let's say for example, you work with the real estate agents. Lifetime value of one client comes down to five thousand dollars. You say based on the five thousand dollars, I will charge you fifteen hundred per month because I'm gonna bring you five thousand and you pay me 1500, which I'm getting you 3X plus return on ad spend, which is, or, or just on basically your what you're gonna be getting, right? From one client. Or you could also say 500 per month for Facebook ads, plus we're gonna give you 20, uh, you're gonna pay me $20 per lead for 10 leads excluding ad costs. So that's kind of, you know, additionally what you could do, you could say I only run your ads, but then you also pay me a per lead amount to get you also additional you get get yourself an additional fee per month and start getting them even more results. That's the retainer model, okay? Now, then we have the performance model. So the performance model is the model where we do a fixed amount per lead, per appointment, or per client that you deliver. And usually this works well in saturated niches because you gotta be smart about saturated niches. If you go to them, you already know that a lot of people have approached them. So if you come to them with a retainer model, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. They're going to say, well, well I'm going to pay you that. Like, what's what's my guarantee? Like, how, uh, how are you different from all these other people, right? That's what they're going to ask you. So what we do here is we base our, uh, you know, the amount of what we get paid on the number of leads that we deliver. So names, emails, phone numbers. Or we base it on the amount of appointments that we'll deliver or the number of appointments that actually show up or the clients that we'll deliver or the revenue we generate with the ads, right? But the systems must be well established to be able to measure these results. You got to understand how to do this. We'll help you with that, but you got to understand it. So you could be asking $20 to $100 per lead or $50 to $250 per appointment or $200 to $1,000 per client or a percentage of the ROAS if you're working with e-commerce or coaching clients, right? So for example, you could do $20 per lead for 25 leads that they buy from you beforehand, 
per month via Facebook ads, excluding ad costs. So they pay you $500 per month. And as an example, it could be more. And that you could pay that on a monthly basis, but that's performance based because let's say, for example, what you could do is they buy in the leads, right? So they pay you a per lead amount. They could also do, they pay you per appointment. So hundred dollars per appointment for three to six appointments, or let's say 15 appointments, right? Uh, but three to six appointments via Google ads, that should be, you know, a hundred dollars times three to six, 300 to $600 per month. Um, I would increase the amount of appointments here and then increase the amount of the dollar amount per lead. So it should, it should be a lot more. But just to give you an example, right? Just some numbers. Now you could do $400 per client for one to two clients via YouTube ads. You could say, okay, so I'm gonna get you, get you these clients, but you only pay me when you actually get the client. So they only pay you on a performance base, right? And you could say as an additional, right? As, a, as an other offer, you could say 25% of the ROAS is what I wanna get every month via Pinterest ads. I'm gonna run your Pinterest ads, but I wanna get 25% of your return on ad spend. So let's say for example, we spent you know, a thousand dollar ad costs, we generate 2000, right? We do 2000 minus 1000 and we get 25% of the 1000. It's 250 one time, right? So I hope that makes sense. That's a performance model. Those are also opportunities that you could do and different things that you can try out regarding that. Now we have, you, you know, basically there's only these two models, but we can do additional models as well. One additional model that we could do is combining these two. So doing the retainer plus the performance model and calling it an ROI offering, right? So combination of, and basically we already saw that like all the way to the top of the retainer model where I said, you know, you can do 500 per month for Facebook ads, or you could do, uh, you know, this one, you could say $500 per for Facebook ads or $20 per lead additionally on top of that. So that's basically the retainer plus performance model. So it's a combination of a fixed monthly amount and additional amount for the leads, appointments or customers you deliver on top of that. So it provides you with a safety net with the fixed monthly monthly fee plus a bonus if you deliver the results. So it's easiest to implement when you already have results. So what a couple of people are doing in our community as well, they say, hey client, you're gonna pay me a fixed amount of $500 to $2,000. Plus you're gonna pay me a lead amount of all the additional leads and I'm gonna get you on top of the amount of leads that we already discussed. So I'm gonna give you 15 leads per month, but all the additional leads, you're gonna pay me an extra amount on top of that. Now you could do the same thing, but not do it with leads. You could say, if I get you this amount of appointments on top of the appointments that we're already gonna be getting, uh, you pay me additional. You could also do that for the customers. So for example, you pay me $2,000 per month, but you're also gonna be paying me $500 for an additional customer that I'm gonna bring you. So if they sign up as a customer, I'm gonna get that fee as well. It's an additional bonus for me to do my work and grow with you. Or you could also say, hey, I want this amount per month plus a percentage of ROAS, right? So you could say, I want $2,000 per month Plus, I want a percentage of ROAS that I'm going to be giving you, right? One, another thing that you could also do, which is kind of a hype right now, like IPGA, right? Uh, Info Product Growth Agency or um, uh, EGA, like e-commerce growth agency or uh, local business growth agency. Like they, they, they always think of a new name that they can use for these things, but it comes down to retainer plus performance model. Meaning what you can also do is you can say, hey, it's $2,000 per month. Uh, you know, you're gonna, we're going to get a fixed fee plus a percentage of your revenue, of your total revenue, right? Or you can even go further and you can say, I want to get a percentage of your entire business or I'm going to be a shareholder within your business. That's something you can also say. That's a next level growth partner. We're going to be talking about that further down the line when you get to that point. But that's also something to keep in mind. So as you can see, there are a lot of models that you can use. So it, it will be central for us to, and focused for us to get it back to one model, choose that, go with that, test it out. But you can do so many different things, right? But we're gonna choose one and go with that. Now there's also an additional one, which is called the hourly rate model. It's a convenience offering, which I'll explain later down the line, but the convenience offering comes down to, it's convenient for you to actually do that for them. Meaning clients don't really need it, but it's something you do on the additionally. So a fixed hourly rate that a customer pays you, it's easy to start with, it's incredibly difficult to scale because you cannot scale your time, you only have 24 hours a day. It's usually for management focused services, not difficult to sell to businesses though, and it's usually good for consulting offers. So for example, if you do something for a client, they ask you, hey, can you do this, can you create additional things? You can say, yes, I can do that, but my hourly fee is $250. So I can do that for you, it's gonna take me four hours, I can do it, you pay me $1,000, I'm gonna do it for you, easy, right? So Hopefully that makes sense. Or you can consult them on things, have an hourly fee. That's the way that you can do that. We don't really use it, to be honest. I don't even use like the hourly rate with my consulting things. I use it, I do ROI based with coaching or consulting, but that's something in the other program that you know I'll be teaching you there. 
Other than that, right, here are all the offers summed up, just in a nutshell. So, retainer model, it's a monthly fee. Performance model, pay per lead. Performance model, pay per appointment. Performance model, pay per show up, someone that actually shows up, right? And then you get paid. And performance model, pay per client, or performance model, percentage of revenue from ads. One thing you can, by the way, with performance models that you can also be, you know, thinking of, is there's two ways of doing them. So a performance model could be one where you say, hey, I really get paid only when I do the performance and I get paid afterwards. So you work basically free and then you get paid. But a performance model can also be a model where you say, you pay me up front, you kind of buy the leads in, you buy the appointments, you buy the show ups, you buy the clients. You buy them in, I deliver it to you and if I don't deliver you the amount that I've actually promised you, you're gonna get the amount of the people that you're actually paid for individually back. So for example, I say, hey, I'm gonna get you 50 leads for $2,500 per month. But if I don't get you the leads, you're gonna get your money back per lead that you paid. So I don't get you 50 leads, I get you 25 leads, you're gonna get $1,250 back. But you paid me upfront, so my team can do the work. Does that make sense? So do you understand like how you can really like play with these offers? You can really make them as you want. And that one, by the way, that I said, I scaled that up to 60 clients with the one that I just mentioned to you. Because I position it as a no cure, no pay in front of them. They come and I say, you buy them in. But still no cure, no pay. Because if I don't cure you, you don't pay. But I'm going to cure you. So you pay. Does that make sense? So that's basically how you do it. And then on basically on top of that, you know, the seventh and eighth offer, like I said, retainer, performance model, ROI offering, hourly rate model. So there are practically only eight models that you can use, right? There are like, you have the performance model as well, where you say like, hey, I'm going to have a, you know, fixed fee. So a retainer plus performance, so you say like fixed fee plus like on top of that. So retainer perf plus performance model can be worked out completely as well. So you can have like 15 offers, <laughs> but to sum up, it comes down to this, right? So depending on the niche you choose, you need to become more creative with your offer. You might even need to use a guarantee so you can differentiate yourself from other agencies. And here are some examples of guarantees that you could start using. So just to be clear, a guarantee usually means if you don't achieve X in Y time, we will insert offer, right? So if you don't achieve 15 clients in 180 days, you're gonna get your money back and you're gonna get a wire transfer of X amount, right? That's what we're gonna do. So that's a guarantee. Now, there are four types of guarantees, usually, that we can use. One is the unconditional guarantee, which indicates that it's a no questions asked, refund if needed immediately. It's unconditional. So doesn't matter what happens, you get a refund. That's it, right? So I don't care if, you, if you're unhappy, doesn't matter what it is, if you've taken use of it, 180 days, you get a full refund. That's it, no questions asked, right? That's an unconditional one. I don't really use it often, to be honest but it, it's, it's there, so it has to be mentioned. Two is the conditional guarantee. This one includes terms and guarantees. So for example, you have joined the business blueprint. The offer for us was the business blueprint to you, and the guarantee was you get 25 clients in 365 days, or you get your money back plus a wire transfer, but there's terms and guarantees. You need terms and conditions. It says terms and guarantees. It's terms and conditions, by the way. Terms and conditions. You need to do... X amount of appointments, uh, X amount of calls, X amount of outreach, X amount of this, this, that, right? So you need to use that. Now, there's also the anti-guarantee, which is basically not using a guarantee. So it comes down to all sales are final. All sales are final, that's it. You don't get any refund place with that or anything like that because of the valuable services and it's easy to copy. So for example, you can say to a client, all sales are final, so once you go in with us, there's no guarantee because our service is so valuable that we basically don't offer that. It's like saying I'm a Michelin star restaurant and we don't offer refunds. We don't offer it because we're so good. Because if you come, you're gonna have a tremendous experience 10 out of 10 times. And that is where you have, need to have a really good why and a really good like understanding of what you're actually offering so you can give that to the client. It comes later down the line. I, I, and I don't use it, by the way, I don't use it. Im I use conditional guarantees and these, this one that I'm gonna tell you right now, implied guarantees. So implied guarantees is no cure, no pay, only get paid when results are achieved or or get paid, but then pay the client back when results aren't achieved, right? So 
it's kind of a, like I said, I play a little bit with it and I tested it out and it worked really good. So I use conditional and implied guarantees. Those are the four guarantees that we can use, right? Now, like I said, number one and number two, number three, we don't really use. Number two and number four, we do use. Let me give you some examples of ones that I've used and ones that students used that actually work. One, pay for 15 leads up front. Pay me for 15 leads up front. If I don't deliver you the leads, you will get the dollar amount for the lead back. You'll get it immediately back. There you go. You don't have to pay me, but you're gonna pay up front because I need to do my work. It's a really strong guarantee. Now, the second one is get 15 leads or appointments, show ups, clients per month. You're gonna get 15, you know, let's say for example, leads, or we will continue working for free, right? Which indicates you are gonna get 15 leads. Like, come on, if you have to be out of your mind to not get 15 leads. So, and the third one is get X appointments or clients or your money back plus a wire transfer. It's kind of basically what you have with this program, right? I tell you 25 plus clients uh, or your money back plus a wire transfer if you don't get it. Four is get an X return on your investment in X days or your money back. So I could say, hey, um, you know, realtor, you know, you can get three times your return on your investment back meaning you pay me two and a half thousand dollars per month. If I don't get you at least seven and a half thousand dollars in 180 days, you're gonna get your money back. It's really strong, right? It indicates that I'm gonna be delivering it. So and that I know what I'm talking about. Five is get X, this is more e-commerce and info products. So get X ROAS or you don't pay us. So I'm gonna get you a four ROAS minimum. I'm gonna calculate your break-even ROAS. And if I go on top of that, that's when I get, basically get paid. If I don't reach it, I'm not gonna get paid. Simple as that. And the sixth one is don't pay us anything until we get results, no cure, no pay, right? And that one is pretty extreme. I wouldn't recommend that, but I would recommend using it, positioning it as a front-end offer. And then when you get on a call with a client telling them, hey, you need to pay up front, but I'm gonna be giving it back to you for the people that you actually haven't gotten. As you can see, I use conditional guarantees, right? Mostly, but mo most of the times I do implied guarantees because I, I notice that for example, for local businesses, they work really, really good. I mean, you could also do a conditional guarantee where you could say, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to get you 15 leads or I'm going to get you 15 appointments per month or we will uh, or you'll get your money back. But the terms and conditions could be that they need to provide you with at least 30 cold call recordings that you need to check in order for you to actually give them their money back. That's a really smart one right? Because they need to do the work as well. Then you put it in their shoes as well. They put it in their hands as well. They need to also work. They cannot just do the work, but it's a really strong guarantee. So guys, if you want some more inspiration, check out the book, 100 Million Offers by Alex Ramosi. Those four guarantees I got from him, right? So take a look at that. Really, really good book, depending on, you know, going on offers, one of the best, if not, when it comes down to offers. So that being said, you know, we talked about a couple of things. So models, that's what we talked about. Adjustments possible. So understand that when choosing a model, it does not mean you cannot change it in the future. In fact, I would strongly advise for you to make adjustments where necessary if you find opportunities to charge more for your services. Do it. Adjust things. Don't just say, that's it. Just try it out. But it's dependent on the niche. So the model you choose will always depend on the niche and the level of saturation in that niche. The more saturated it is, the greater the chance you may need to use the performance model with a strong guarantee. So choose one. For now, I recommend taking a moment to consider which model you think would best fit your niche and where you see the most potential. Give yourself 10 to 15 minutes, stop the video, choose a model, and then continue with the video. Now, choose a model, continue. That being said, let's talk about packages versus single offerings. The more options you give your clients, the more confusion you're gonna give. And usually, the more they're gonna opt for the cheapest one, right? The more options you give them uh, to choose from, the greater the chance of confusion about which offering to best choose. Now the simplicity is, within this program, we will teach you to apply simplicity within your efficient and focused agency. Less is more is our mindset, not adding more to the back, like we don't wanna do that. Therefore, I would advise you to choose one offering and present it to the client with a backup offering if you know they really, really need it, right? So. You go to the offer, you go to the client, you say it's $2,500 for 100 leads or 50 leads, 15 leads or 20 leads. But if they say, oh, it's too expensive, you say, okay, I have a fallback offer. It's 1,500 for 15 leads. Oh, it's too expensive. Okay, so what would not be expensive? Then you go back to 1,000. So you can fall back, fallback offerings. That's what we wanna have practically, right? So you can definitely have that. Now, 
still use packages. So for some managing offering activities, packages may be more efficient to apply. So you could potentially use them, but this only applies to a small percentage of people that will be in this program. So for example, you could have a package of website optimization, website management and SEO and SEA. $2,500 per month. Second one is you add YouTube ads, YouTube SEO, $3,000 per month. And the other one is content creation, video editing, $4,000 per month. Now, adding more activities to your offering doesn't necessarily mean more value for your client. They might not see it as more value. They might see it as a, an extra, but it doesn't mean that it would solve their problems. So they might not even get it, right? Therefore, it's better to look at which offering truly helps the customer and choose that. That's what I would advise. So keep packages in mind for yourself potentially as every client is different, but don't use them initially. I wouldn't use them initially, okay? So incorporate options into a single offering. What I would advise you to do is incorporate options into the one offering you have for the client. So you have one offering, one niche, one offering. I'm not referring to packages with a different offering, but the opportunity to, for the client to work with you for three, six or 12 months. Here's an example. So. Your offering is, for example, you deliver 10 high quality leads monthly via Facebook. You do the creation and management of ads for niche. You do daily optimizations to attract more customers. You do lead retention and forwarding to you, do contact via Slack. That's $1,000 per month that you ask for that. Now your options could be, you can collaborate with us for three months at a full price. You can collaborate with us for six months at a one month discount price. You can collaborate with us for 12 months with a two month discount price. When doing this and adding this to your offer, you don't have to think about adding things to the back. You can just make it more, you know, easier for clients to start working with you when they choose to do a longer partnership, right? Because you give them what they need. You're not just adding things to add things. You're giving them what they need and you're just delivering that. Pretty simple. But if it comes to the point where you notice that they might need something else additionally, then you can say, okay, so this is one offering and the other one next to that is a website. And the website for a website, you pay flat fee 4K. That's it, you pay for that, right? So you could you could become more creative depending on your niche that you've chosen and the things that you can do. So if a customer comes to you needing something different from what you offer, so what, what do you do then? You can find a strategic referral partner, refer the customer and get a fixed commission because then you don't you know put your focus into something else. But may, perhaps the first one you can take on, but if you notice that it takes too much time and brings you away from your focus, don't do it. Don't just do it to take the money, guys, okay? So write down the option options the customer has with your agency when it comes to the offering. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna be giving you a cheat sheet that you can go through, right? To come up with an offering that you will use for your niche. Remember that this will only be a snapshot as you can always adjust the offering. So go ahead and go through the offer research and confirmation. So if you already have an offer, confirm it hereby. What your offer is, or if you have one offer, your fallback offer, or one offer and an additional offer, max two offers, not more than that. So go ahead and grab the document. And what you will be able to see is, you know, the offer research. So you're gonna be doing offer research first, what your niche is, why did uh, they start this company basically, what keeps your niche awake, what's their biggest frustrations, you will answer all of these questions. And one thing I would recommend to you to do is are there any other marketing agencies that offer something to this niche? Do the research of, of that. Do they offer a managing offering or results oriented offering? What do they do? Do the other marketing agencies use the retainer as an offering or the performance model? Which other model did they use? What do they do, right? And do other marketing agencies offer packages or one offer, write down everything. Even go as far, guys, this is a really neat trick and hack you can do. Even go as far as contacting these agencies or having someone in your network contact them, act as if they were a potential customer, get the information and then go away. Because like, you gotta understand, you're doing a competitor's analysis. That's what you're doing here. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing unethical about that. It's ethical. You need to get your information. If they don't have it on their website, call them. Be a potential client for them, ask it and understand it and thank them for their time and then go on right? You will have a better understanding of what they do and you will be able to use that in your uh, uh, pitch deck, in your sales presentation, right? So that's a hack that you can do. That's something that I've done as well in the past. I knew everyone's offer. And I, when I came into a meeting, I was prepared. I knew everything. They could say, you know, they could say oh, I know this. I said, yeah, yeah, I know. They do this, 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 but I do this, 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 this. I'm better. I can do this better than them. And they would say yes, because I know my shit. I've done my preparations. And that's what something you should do as well. 
So do other marketing agencies, uh, you know, run ads, go to the ad library, take a look at that. And then we start with the offer creation. Are you going to offer a managing offer or a results oriented offer? What service will you provide? Which model are you going to use, use, right? Think about that. Like, what are you going to do? So choose one, max two. Describe the other parts of your offer. What are you going to do? Describe the price of your offer, right? Or the offers that you're going to have if you have multiple ones. What is your guarantee? Are you going to use one? What is the guarantee? Note it down and write out your complete offer below. Just like we have our offering, you can do yours and do more, like do the guarantee, do all these things as well. Like, you know, note down more things. This is just an example that we've given you, but you can note down more things, right? Depending on if you have more things, if that makes sense. So do that. Once you've done it, you have your offer set up or you have it validated and set up again if you're, you know, already have something, but it's going to be crystal clear for you now. Moving forward, you have your niche, you have your offer, you know exactly what needs to be done. And you can add things on top of that if that's actually necessary in the future, right? So that being said, that was the cheat sheet. Now let's talk about customer is king. So see what helps the customer. Running a marketing agency is all about problems, desires, and needs of the customer. And if you can ensure that your offering can help them with those things, you will be swimming in customers, right? Figuratively, not literally, of course. <laughs> so we have the niche knowledge and your offering. We have the market with problems, needs, and desires, and we have the skills that you already know or can learn. If you're in the middle, you're going to have a great opportunity and for scaling and retention if all these things are aligned, right? So let's say, for example, I have coaches. My offer is the business blueprint or my done-for-you offerings where I take everything out of their hands, right? And I do basically, what I do is a retainer plus performance model. That's what I do for my own business. And I know that there's a lot of problems, needs, and desires that they have, and I have skills that I can implement for them, and I can have my team implement that for them too. So it's 30 out of 30, basically, right, for us. Now, on the left-hand side, you know, the niche knowledge in your offering, how well do you speak the language of the niche? How well does your offering fit the niche? On a scale of 1 to 10, say it for yourself, note it down. When it comes to the market with problems, needs, and desires, how significant are the problems? How great is the need? On a scale of 1 to 10, note it down, set, go through to the next one. Skills, you already know, you can learn. What skills do you already possess? What do you already have that could help them or solve their problems, needs, or desires? How well did you master this? On a scale of 1 to 10, note it down. Based on that, you'll get a score, a realistic score of how well and what chances there are of your opportunity to actually scale it. And if your skills aren't there yet, you can hire people that can do it or you can get better at it yourself. If the market problems, needs, and desires aren't there, you don't know it yet, you need to do more research. If you don't know the niche, you need to do more research. And if your offering isn't clear yet, you forgot to do the document which I just told you, so go back and do that, okay? So the customer is king, meaning we can only, only, only deliver them something if there's, you know, on a scale of one to 10, at least a six on all of these things. And the great thing about it, is we can be dynamic. We can choose our niche. We can choose our offer. We can learn our skills, become better at them. We can understand our market needs and problems. So anything is to be learned. Nothing is set in stone. You can learn things, adjust things, and be dynamic from there. What's your offer, right? Hope that makes sense. With that being said, scaling and retention. So the higher the scale for the three mentioned points, the greater chance of acquiring and retaining customers for a longer period of time. Now, if you continue to develop your skills, expand your knowledge about the offering you provide, improve your sales skills, you'll have the greatest chance of keeping and retaining customers for the long term, guys. Okay, so hope you understand this because these are the most important things because the customer is king, but so are you. Let me explain this. When trying to acquire a customer, it is important to adapt to their problems, needs, and desires, which you're offering to be able to close them. And once you have acquired the customers, it is also important, right, that you also have respect for yourself and crucial to protect your time and set clear expectations because otherwise they're gonna just walk all over you. So yes, you need to com you know comply a little bit with them and understand what they need and give them what they need and all those things, but you also gotta be realistic to ask what you really think they need. Because they could say, I need a website, but in your head, they would say, I need more clients. They would say, oh no, I don't want to run ads because I have a bad experience with it. I want to run a, get a website so I can get more clients. And you could be in your head like, but wait, well, Facebook ads are going to get you more clients. So then you got to go deeper into the client and say like, 
okay, but why do you want to do website when a website cannot, it will indirectly bring your clients, but not directly. Why not directly get you clients? So that's, those are some things that you will have to learn how to talk with clients that way and be more specific with them so they don't go astray, right? So they don't go all over the place and you, you know, they are king. Yes, the customer is king, but we also got to think a little bit for ourselves, like, hey, what could be useful? So 10% you think, okay, this is what they would actually need. 90% you listen to them, you give them what they want. That's how it should be, okay? Good and bad customers. In future weeks, week four to be exact, we will discuss good and bad customers. But for now, what you need to know is that we are looking for good customers and people with whom we think we can work well. So you choose the customer, not the other way around. Really important. Power versus force, right? David Hawkins. Basically, you choose your customer. You choose them. They don't choose you. You decide to who, who you're going to work with, right? That's how it's supposed to be from day one. They shouldn't be imposing themselves as, oh, I'm choosing you as an agency. No, 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 no. You're lucky to be working with me as an agency. I'm choosing you to work with. I have multiple clients. Abundance mindset, growth mindset. Okay, that's what we're doing. So guys, that being said, our five-step process to success is the niche offer. Those things we talked about right now. Slowly but surely, we're moving our way towards the client acquisition, the service delivery, and the retention and the referrals. Okay, so now the action step is go through the cheat sheet, offer research and confirmation, as well as, like I said, if you already have an offer, I want to see it confirmed. Now, answer all the questions, set up your offer or confirm your offer, share it in the school group. I want to see your offer. I want to know what it is. Is it still Facebook ads plus website? What is it? Is it SEO plus something? What is it? Note it down, set it up and share it with us in the school group. So every, everyone and I also can give you feedback as well as the coaches can. Now, the niche and the offer are established now. The first steps are taken. And if you've done everything so far, you're on your way to becoming a top 1% agency owner. Like I said, we'll have full clarity with all the offers that are basically possible to use. Once you have a niche, once you have an offer, now we can go all in and basically turn the buttons when it comes to client acquisition and just push it through the roof when it comes to this niche. And if we contact them and they don't want our offer in the first hand, okay, no worries. Let's see what they need more. Let's see what we can change about the offer, change the offer, go to the laboratory technician, you know, ask the laboratory technicians, AKA Stefan and all the coaches, what can we do? What can we adjust? We go back to the clients. We say, hey, we got a different offer. What would you like about this? They say, yes, okay, boom, got your first clients, right? Getting more clients, getting more clients, getting more clients. And if you already have an agency with a proven niche, proven offer, you just gotta be ramping up it by validating your offer here, ramping it up, setting it up to set in stone for retention and scaling and just touching the buttons even more and pushing it through. So we're going to have your offer set in stone, push the buttons and you're going to scale up. Guys, that was uh, one of the most important modules so far in week one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope everything is cut and clear for you. If not, please let me know as well. Give us some feedback as well. Let's go to the second module and the next module after this. Look forward to seeing you there. Bye.